Welcome back to Beyond the Headline, everyone. It's a very exciting day to be on the show because we're here at Eero headquarters in San Francisco with Nick Weaver, the co-founder and CEO. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thanks for coming over. It's great to have you. So I want to start out with the earliest inklings of Eero. You used to install Wi-Fi routers for your family friends in Chicago. Not many kids like to do that. Yeah. How does it feel now to have a product that's out in the world actually in people's homes? I mean, that's been, um, that's been one of the most rewarding things is seeing Eero's like out in the wild actually running <laughs> people's homes. Um, you know, like you said, I, uh, I grew up setting up networks in, in homes all over my neighborhood uh, and then in college set up networks. Um, and, you know, number one problem people always came to me with was the Internet's broken. And it was <laughs> typically because of, you know, really bad hardware um, uh, and, and, and really just the, the products in people's homes weren't, uh, weren't built for how we're now using the Internet with devices everywhere, streaming in every room of the house. And it's been really rewarding to have Eero out in the wild, hear stories from our customers about how the internet finally works, and it works just as well as the running water and the power in their homes. Well, there's so many parts of that that I really want to dive into, but before we go, let's just explain a little bit how Eero works for someone who might not know. Sure. Um, so so Wi-Fi uh, is a radio wave, the exact same thing as light and sound. Um, and, and so what that means is as you get further away from your router, the signal degrades and you get lower speeds and it's less reliable. And a headache. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, and, and, and so when the in incoming connections into our homes were really slow, like a couple of megabits a second, um, then you could have one router that was really loud in the corner of your house. Uh, a good analogy there is like, think of like one really big speaker, uh, and you turn the volume all the way up. Like, you're still going to hear it just low fidelity, you know, on the other end of your house or up in your bedroom or outside. Um, but now, as the connection speeds into our homes are much faster and we're streaming, like, Netflix and HBO, you need to have much, uh, you know, a, a much better signal in every room of the house. And the only way you're going to do that is with multiple units. So at Eero, what we've done is we've built this really easy-to-use system where you plug one Eero in your cable modem or DSL modem, and then you plug other Eros in around your house. Um, and what happens is they, they, we use some technology called uh, mesh networking, where the devices all come online and they communicate with each other. It's basically like, instead of using like cables to plug them all in, it uses wireless. Um, and then you have multiple units in your home that are all broadcasting um, Wi-Fi. So you get a really fast, really performant network um, that works everywhere. Uh, so it makes it much faster and then also more reliable. I think that's something that, you know, you and I were just chatting about. We all have Wi-Fi yep. in our houses now, and we all have a substandard experience <laughs> unless you have Euro. What has the education process been like saying, hey, here's how it works. This is how it's going to change your life. Yeah. Um, so for fortunately, one of the one of the you know, best things we have going for us is people are cutting the cord like all over the country. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, and, and the way we're consuming content is now all streaming. And so uh, if, you, if you talk to the you know, typical, typical customer or consumer, they're now watching Netflix on a weekly, sometimes nightly basis. And so they have that you know, buffering screen of death uh, where you know, they're trying to watch the finality of House of Cards and you just get the buffer screen. Um, and typically, you know, the problem there isn't Netflix or your internet connection, typically the problems with your home network. Um, and so now we start having these like use cases and these experiences where your home network is the limiting factor. And that's what Eero was built to, um, address. And I almost feel like you guys are building for the future because the number of connected devices that we're going to have in our home. So my family, family of four yep. has 16. And we don't even have, like, smart things or any of that. So yep. eventually you'll have that. You'll have an oven like June that's connected to the inter Internet. How do you see Euro evolving in the home? Yeah. Um, well, if, if you start looking at every experience, uh, you like to think about it is um, there's content, there's communication, there's security, and then there's, like, home control or automation. Um, for, you know, the last, you know, 10, 20, 30 years, all of those things have been their own, like, you know, walled gardens. So content was over uh, cable and um, satellite. Security was from players like, you know, ADT and Brinks. Uh, communication was copper landline phones. And, you know, home control and automation were these, like, systems that were tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, and now for the first time ever, 
they're, all those services are now connecting to the internet and are now running on the home network. And so your home network is becoming so important because it runs every core experience in your home. Um, and, and so, yeah, what we've built at Eero is this super reliable, um, uh, really performant system that keeps getting better and better over time. Um, so the way we built the system is our units all can talk to our cloud um, at, you know, many, many times a minute um, and get the latest software updates. And so, um, you know, we can keep changing the software, keep making it better, um, you know, even after it's live in your home. And there's just small, subtle things that you guys have done, like the ability to share a Wi-Fi password yeah. instead of having to go dig it up or share some embarrassing password like the one in my house that no one wants to talk about. <laughs> Little things like that go a long way, and there's so many nuances in your brand on your site that just speak to what you guys stand for. Why is it so important to you to have a human voice to Euro? Well, you just look at all this complexity, like technology is... is it's so complicated and it's scary to like to most consumers and their home networks are uh, some of the most frustrating and, and, and scary pieces of equipment in the house. And so, you know, one of our principles here at Eero is, um, you know, how do you make all these things approachable and easy to use um, and, and you take away that complexity and, and start replacing it with like really simple, delightful experiences um, because, you know, technology should be an enabler, not like a, a, a frustration. I really saw that come alive. So once you guys launched, you guys had a great story from one of your customers, Betsy, who's a grandmother. She installed Euro by herself, yep. and she was absolutely thrilled. Why are those stories critical to the development of Euro? Like, why is that what I remember instead of all these great things you guys are doing? I, I think it's like, you know, you really have that, that human element, like that personal connection. And like, you know, that's why we focus so much on our, our voice, the way we communicate things, the design of the device, because it's all about having this experience, this connection with the brand, the connection with the product. Um, and so when you have stories like Betsy, where, you know, people get to experience all of those things and then go share that experience with, you know, the world. Uh, I, I mean, for me, that's those are the moments I live for where um, you, you just put a smile on somebody's face. Um, because you've, you've finally given them a, a piece of technology that's, you know, now enables them to uh, remove frustration and just, you know, uh, have, you know, richer experiences in their home. Have you had a story or a piece of feedback that's either been totally crazy or just really incredible and had you smiling all day? Betsy's definitely one of them. Um, and, you know, I... I'll get emails like a couple, you know, five, ten a week where, you know, someone will put in a system and say like, uh, you know, I can finally, you know, stream, you know, stream video from my bedroom um, or I can, um, you know, work from my backyard uh, or, you know, my family is no longer like yelling at me <laughs> about having the Internet broken and um, we can actually just, you know, spend time relaxing instead of like troubleshooting our homes. Like, I think the emails like that, um, you know, those are the ones that um, I'm always smiling about. I want to shift gears for a couple of minutes and really hone in on that voice and messaging. There's a great piece that we were just talking about in yep. first round review. I think this was back in December about your brand and what Ariel and you guys worked on. And there's a great line that says, imagine you have a super smart architect friend who's always flawlessly dressed, deliberate in his actions, and somehow funny and approachable at the same time. When I'm on your site, when I'm on social media, I have this wide range of emotions where sometimes I'm laughing, sometimes I'm like, oh my God, that's me too, or I know how to do that. Tell me about that and the experiences of developing that, because I know it's not easy. Yeah, it takes, um, it, it takes a long time, it takes a lot of thinking. Um, one, you know, one of the things that we made an investment in very early on, like our, our second hire um, was our head of marketing. Um, oh, wow. And so even before, you know, it, as the products coming together, you know, even before there's something to sell and market, we were, you know, we were spending time on like, how should our brand feel? How should people experience it? And, you know, all of us came back to like, there are this group of, you know, friends or people in our lives that are always like friendly and helpful and approachable. And, you know, we wanted to create that same experience um, when people used our product. And you see it come alive with a couple of examples that I love is, you know, you'll have a tweet that says it takes two to tango when you're announcing 
the Eero 2 factor. And my favorite one that I was sharing with Maya, who's on your team, is what to do in your Wi-Fi dead zones. And I actually have those things saved on my computer just as, you know, a funny thing that I can look at every now and again or I send to my friends. As you go forward, how do you continue to make sure that always stays really fresh? Yeah, uh, a lot of that just comes down to the people you hire and, um, you know, and just continuing to you know, push on voice. Like, you know, our, our team, it's like this focus on approachability is so important. And so we, you know, we hire people who are, uh, are excited about doing that. Um, and so, you know, whether it's a tweet or an article or a help desk, uh, you know, a knowledge base article um, or copying our app, like, uh, you know, the folks who are building, the, you know, those parts of the company um, are, are all focused around this, like, approachability and, and helpfulness. And so that's so once you kind of nail that down, the smart architect brand, it really has to touch every part of the brand and the design and the product. Yep. I love it, and I love the smart architect brand. It's really, um, it, it really takes a whole team effort. Like mm-hmm. everyone, whether you know you're uh, writing the core software that runs the Eros, or developing our cloud, or um, you know the guys who are. Um, you know, setting up our manufacturing lines, like all of it kind of comes full circle and like everyone has to make that commitment to, you know, building that brand and building that experience. Uh, And again, it comes down to the, you know, the people you hire uh, and how you bring people into the team. I love the holistic perspective and it lends to another first ground piece that was more recent and it was about your guys' launch. And your head of product shared a really great insight that, you know, the beta period that you guys had was not just about testing the product, it's about iterating the organization yep. and your processes and how things work. What did you learn during that period? I mean, it, too many things to count. <laughs> um, I, I think the like one of the biggest messages from that is um, you just have to be willing to uh, you have to be willing to like go create a process or a way of handling things and and then like ruthlessly reassess whether or not you could be mm-hmm. doing it better. And everyone has to be on the same page with, okay, this is what we learned from doing X or Y or Z, and this is how we can improve it. And if you're running a really tight beta program, you've got lots of opportunities to keep refining things. And and then you exit the beta program, and then you've got that mentality so that when you're shipping, you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of units to uh, to customers, then you know you you've, you've built that um, that muscle in the organization to like constantly reassess, like, could we be doing this better? Could we be serving our customers in a different, more efficient, um, uh, and more approachable way? And how do you have those conversations with the team where you're able to balance? It's something we all struggle with. Perfection with, no, we have to release this. We just can't work on it anymore. Yeah. Uh, I, it, that's the toughest challenge for, like, any company. Um, like, as much as you want a product to be perfect, it will never be perfect uh, when you ship it. Um but you can make a commitment to continuing to improve the product like and do everything in your power to keep making it better and better and better. So like one good example is, you know, we've been shipping for eight weeks. We've already pushed 10, 12, 10, 11, 12 software updates out, right. out to the field. Um, and so we keep making, you know, these Eero products better and better and better at a very rapid clip, um, which, um, you know, it, it, it's a, it's a great, um, great way to focus. Um, you know, get the minimum um, the minimum product out in a timely manner, and then make that commitment to keep making the product better and better and better um, as you get more customer feedback. Part of that commitment, of course, goes to where you are as CEO, leading the team and the direction and building the team. How has your role evolved? You know, what's your typical day like now versus when you just started? Uh, yeah, I I uh, have a lot less a uh, lot less structure to my days. Um, when we were heads down building the product, like, you know, you get, you get a much more focused time, like trying to like help, you know, whether it's write a product spec or help architect something or go negotiate, um, a specific deal, like you had a lot more focused time. And now with like, you know, customers all over the country, all over the world, um, uh, there's, um, there's just a lot of different tensions. And so like, it's this constant evolution of, uh, of your job as the team grows, as your customer base grows, as your you know products grow, um, just things are constantly in flux. Have you had any core lessons of your time as a founder because you were investing before and came back to the other side of the table? Yeah, um, yeah. It's a, it, the biggest difference is just 
how all-consuming uh, a startup can be. Like it takes over every aspect of your life, and uh, and if you build a, a great team, a great group of people to work with, like it's one of the most rewarding experiences you can have. Um, and uh, and a, you know part of the reason why I'm so excited to come into work every day is like we've just got um, a great group of people to spend time with, um, and and that's you know again that's just that's just been incredibly rewarding. And I think each of those conversations that you were mentioning before of how do we make this better how do we shift something that's more helpful to all of our users and people that are becoming a part of our community it, it all goes back to the team and one of the key insights in that article about your beta program was the way that you guys were asking people questions so instead of saying you know on scale of one to five how tech savvy are you you ask a couple of questions so you can demonstrate you know a whole picture mm -hmm. for someone internally and as a founder how have you used that mindset to ask questions? It's maybe not the obvious question, but gets you to where you need to go. Yeah, I think um, you know on on that front, um, it's as the as the company evolves, you get used to you know people and processes here. Like you just you get you get better, and your intuition improves about like what are the right questions to be asking. Like as you get more and more removed from the day to day execution of things. Um, it's all about, you know, pushing people to, to think in a different direction and making sure, um, you know, they process all the different possibilities. So we, you make, make the best decision as a company. And so a, a lot, a lot of questions are more around like, you know, how do you push thinking, uh, and, and further understanding. Um, and, and part of that just comes from, you know, we've got a value here around curiosity. Um, like people here are all, um, you know, excited about learning about new things and like that carries into the types of questions we ask each other. It's all for creating more understanding versus like, you know, pushing people in a specific direction. I'd love to wrap up, Nick, with, you know, you reflect on a very speedy evolution of the company. The product's out in the world, it's in people's homes and you're hearing from customers. What are you excited about right now? Yeah, I like, Personally, I'm, I'm most excited about getting this product into as many homes as possible. Like so many of us um, deal with this frustration on a daily basis. And, um, you know, we've got, you know, a great opportunity to like remove frustration pe from people's lives. Like our homes are just getting more and more uh, connected, uh, which means they're getting more complicated and frequently um, they're getting, you know, more frustrating versus actually smarter. And so like, you know, the underlying piece that's so important is if you go make that network super reliable, if you make that network that, that essentially is going to run your entire home work flawlessly, then, you know, it's one step in the right direction of starting to remove that com complexity and start adding a little bit of intelligence into our homes. Perfect. And I think one of my favorite things that I want to highlight before we go is when you said it's an enabler to make things easier. And what I think is most important is what you guys are doing enables everyone not just people who are very tech savvy. So what's the best way for someone, no matter how much technology they use, yep. to meet the Eero team, learn about what you guys are doing, and hopefully get started? Yeah, best places to head is Eero.com. Um, you can find us on Twitter, too. Uh, we engage with our uh, you know customers and, and commentary oh, like <laughs> in every channel you can imagine, whether it's you know calling, calling our team, writing an email, sending a tweet. Um, we love talking to folks. Um, and if, if, if you want to learn more about the product, head to Eero.com. Uh, and then um, there's many ways for you to get in touch with us from there. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for coming over.